Man, I can't even see you guys. Maybe that's good, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm Dominic Bracco, and uh, I've been uh, actually for the last three years mostly focusing on uh, the drug war and violence in, in Mexico. And uh, over the last nine months or so, I was fortunate enough to do some traveling around. Uh, I went to Africa and uh, we made it up to um, Puerto Rico and Colombia and did uh, jobs. And every day I was looking out the window, I, I would be on an airplane and I could see um, that every place looked like it had been touched by man. And it felt like there was no natural space left in the world. And so I started thinking that I wanted to do something about, um, how does this work? something about um, the environment. But I felt that the world, in the way that I had growing up, looked at the natural uh, environment was through this kind of like, you could watch it on TV and see the crickets and the birds and everything was uh, in its original natural state. And so um, I started thinking that I wanted to do a project that was based on man and its relationship to the environment. So I. Um, a friend of mine, Eric Vance, who's a reporter and science writer in Mexico City, and I started uh, talking about something we could work on together about um, the environment. And um, I also thought after um, I needed a break of violence, and I thought, well, it could be a good excuse for me to go uh, hang out on the beach for a while <laughs> shooting fishermen because, um, uh, well, they are kind of the last frontier of um, man and nature, because obviously, like, we don't go hunting for our hamburgers, but we do go out fishing for our uh, shrimp. This is a uh, Sari um, fisherman. Um, and we went out. Uh, they leave at like f early in three in the morning. The thing is that now is that as as we consume more and more fish, um, and they are fishing more and more fish away, they have to go farther and farther and farther and farther to catch these fish. So these guys wake up at 3 in the morning and they drive and they go out and this is as, as dawn's breaking and they're finally getting out to fish. This is uh, me driving. Eric is uh, yelling at me to put down the camera because we're even about to die and <laughs> we're flying across the desert uh, chasing these um, Seri fishermen who I'm sure are trying to ditch us at any minute but we made it. <laughs> Uh, this is on the, the coast. Um, on this project, I've been mixing a lot of mediums. This is, these pictures are all from the first trip. I'm actually right in the middle of this thing. Um, we were just there uh, a couple weeks ago. But um, actually, I just sank my camera uh, the last time I went diving. And um, so I've been, the, next, the next set of pictures will be a lot of film. But I think that this gives an interesting perspective. This is... Um, two Seri children playing on the, uh, the sands there. It's interesting looking at how the Seri culture has changed. Um, these people who have always been fishermen um, now uh, in the 1950s were introduced to um, the global uh, markets of fishing by the Japanese. And they came in and, and bought these guys boat motors and, and dynamite, actually, and began fishing with dynamite. Um, so this is, um, I don't know if you guys eat shrimp, but I'm sure you, most of you do. <laughs> uh, this, if you don't, uh, there's like 80% bycatch in, in, in every time they go out for fishing for shrimp. All these like little white fish, and actually many of the brown ones are actually not shrimp. But the only target uh, fish there is, is shrimp. And this is a shrimp trawler. They say the Sea of Cortez is, is plowed over four times. Um, Actually, getting this picture was quite difficult because these shrimp trawlers go out for nine months at a time, and obviously we couldn't go out for nine months to report on this. So um, Eric and I uh, started driving around and um, looking for a boat to take us across. And keep in mind, this is, a, uh, this is uh, in Sonora, Mexico, which happens to be like, banned by the travel authorities uh, from the United States saying that it has a travel ban, um, saying that because it is a drug trafficking point. So I'm, I'm like, Eric and I have this agreement that he's really good at talking to scientists and I'm kind of good at talking to fishermen. So I go around and, uh, and I'm walking along the beach asking these people if um, we can get on a ponga and be taken out to a boat that's in the middle of the ocean. And they're like, 
wait, what are you taking with you and why? And they look at me and I'm this like guarito with a buzz cut hair and they're like thinking no way, you know? But um, finally we convinced somebody. We made it to see because we had actually negotiated with some guys before that we would meet them at this one place where they were supposed to, p to pass for fishing. And uh, we stayed out there that night in this ponga and they never showed up so we had to go back like a few hours later and then we were just like going up boat to boat to boat and that we could find in the ocean and uh, we finally got on this one. Uh, this is um, some divers in Kino. This is actually a diver um, jumping out of the water after his uh, valve um, had been, uh, the respirator in his valve, the hose had came off, so he actually was without air. Um, every year about 10 divers die in this little town, um, mostly now from the bends because they have to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, this is uh, a fisherman, Piolin, and he's down there fishing for Cayo. Um, they've gotten into some deep beds recently, and uh, they'll be down as long as nine hours, so it's really dangerous. Um, I almost knocked myself out before I took this picture. I was, um, these camera housings are like these big giant plastic boxes, and I was jumping in and uh, hit my head in the camera. Luckily, Eric is like a seven foot giant, and he reached over and dragged me out. <laughs> um, Everything in the, the region is based on um, the, the local fishing economy, and, th and including, uh, you know, and so everybody's getting some money from that. This young boy is, um, his job is as a runner on the beach, and he goes around to fishing boats, and he takes anchors out and food, and they give him fish. Uh, the same thing for this man, sleeping on the beach. Uh, this is a diver's home. Um, um, Peter was talking about this too, and it's one of the things that, um, you know, when you're on a project like this, it's hard often to make intimate photographs, which I think is one of the most important things in photography is to create intimacy. And when you're running around like crazy all over the place um, and trying to cover a place that is, you know, gigantic, entire sea. But, um, you know, we, this is this picture, I kind of liked it, even though it's weird, but because he's, you just see, he's like so proud to show off his kid. This is his house. Um, one of the, uh, right now, shrimp farming is, is increasing in Mexico because um, after the passing of several free trade agreements in, in Mexico and the United States, um, agriculture collapsed and one of the programs from the uh, Mexican authorities was to start sending, um, um, to start sending people to the ocean to, to become fishermen to work. So many people went on and uh, um, they, they became fishermen because they were subsidizing boat motors and uh, these, these sort of things. So um, now there's so many fishermen working there and extracting so much biomass from the ocean that they've decided that maybe shrimp farming would be a great um, alternative. But these guys now um, have flooded the market with shrimp, which is lower, lowering the cost per kilo of shrimp, and now fishermen are out fishing harder. Uh, this is a Sari girl with her mother. These are um, finned um, manta rays. Shells, um, snails. These are uh, Sari um, police. They, they try to protect their waters. Um, I was hoping to hang out with these guys for a while, but they ran me off. <laughs> Big gun, so. <laughs> this is uh, men's mending their nets, and this is a fishing town. And this is what it looks like there, which is obviously a great place to spend a few months. <laughs> um, you can see all these small scale fishermen, these pongas, they're there. There's, you know, it's not so much big, big, big boats anymore, but just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of small fishing boats. Um, one of the things is like talking about access and trying to make connection. I included this picture because we're supposed to be talking about our processes, but um, this this is kind of just a funny story. So Eric is like pasty, pasty, pasty white, and it's like. 120 degrees or something in the Sonoran Desert. And it's so harsh that actually, I think like Survivor Man or something did a series that was, I'm like surviving in Sari Land or something, which is kind of silly because he was at a fishing camp. But um, this, 
this day, we had been fishing all day with these guys, and then we ended up cleaning these nets all day with them. And it's just kind of a way. Sometimes you just got to jump in on the work. And um, so we spent about four or five hours cleaning uh, these guys, and we've peeled hundreds and hundreds of heads of shrimp and pulled in nets and all that stuff as a way to build trust, really. Uh, you see these schools like this of, of small fish, but you don't hardly see big fish anymore. And these are the industrial trawlers, and that's it. Jason.